Good morning, and welcome to the Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. Your host, Rick Schisler, is a Silver Fox advisor who personally has over 40 years of experience as a serial entrepreneur. So sit back, pull out your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we join Rick Schisler in his Lone Star Weekly Business Hour. And welcome to each and every one of you today. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Weekly Business Hour. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. We've got a beautiful March day here in downtown Conroe today and a great day to talk about business. Monday, the beginning of the week, business week for a lot of us. We have a great, great show lined up for you today. First, we'll start with our thought for the week, uh, the power of encouragement, and then we'll check in with Dick on the business and Lone Star. And then we have some great news items to share with you and some business tips. So I encourage you, sit back. Get ready, pull out your pen and pad, and let's get started with today's show. First, let me remind you that if you have a comment or a thought that you'd like to share with me uh, while we're on the air, or it can be after the show, please know that my email address is rick at irlonestar.com. I'd love to hear from you. I get occasional emails with people with questions about some of the things that we discussed on the show. It can be about anything business, so let me know at rick at IRLoneStar.com. Uh, first, our thought for the week. What is business free speech? You know, the news lately has been somewhat dominated by the discussion of speech, most of it political speech involving our current presidential election and nominating process. Uh, a lot of things have happened over the last couple of weeks. A lot of folks have tried to disrupt the ability of some of the candidates to give a speech, to give a talk, to visit uh, with their uh, faithful. And so we've heard discussions. If you listen to the news a little bit deep, you'll hear discussions about free speech and what does it mean and what responsibilities do I have as a speaker, in this case a political speaker, to control things and what responsibility do potential listeners have to listen or to not disrupt. Uh, it's uh, very interesting, but there's lots of topics out there, lots of different examples of free speech. Uh, one of the really important types of speech is protected speech, and that is speech that's guaranteed originally uh, to us as citizens of the United States of America in our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, that we're guaranteed the ability to speak on certain topics and within, I consider, certain broad boundaries. Uh, we're also guaranteed the right uh, by case law to burn the American flag which I know irritates a lot of people and always concerns me. But the idea is that being an American means we have a right to speak. And let me make a footnote. That's not true in a lot of countries. That's not true in a lot of countries that we would consider free uh, in Europe and whatnot. Uh, people who have been our allies, speech is not as broad and free as it is here in America. What I particularly want to talk about, though, is business free speech. Business free speech is more about what you can say or claim about your products or services. Uh, many times when we talk about our products and services as business owners or managers, uh, we speak with passion. Uh, we're proud of what we do. We're proud of our company. We're proud of the people that work there. Uh, we're proud of our, our customers. And so we have all this pride and passion. And so when someone asks us what we do or what we, how we make a living, we're very uh, passionate about it. And, and that's kind of part of business free speech. I think you need to be passionate about it. But where concerns come in is particularly when it moves into what the realm of what is known as advertising. Business free speech has some parameters or some boundaries when it comes to advertising. And usually this uh, gets into the area of whether you're just being blustery, blusterous or blustering about what you're saying. Well, my product is the greatest product in the world and it'll make your life different. Or whether you're misleading in your speech, which is not protected in business free speech. Is it fraudulent? My product will make you well 100% of the time. My product will be perfect in every aspect and will perform for you in ways you can't imagine. Now we sort of get to the edge of what's protected in business free speech. The key, though, is you need to get out there and speak freely about your business, your products and services, 
but always, always speak accurately about your business. You're in the right place if you're a business owner, manager, or you're considering starting your own business because the weekly business hour is where all of Montgomery County comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve your business, and to hear from some of our own local business leaders on how they have found success right here in Montgomery County. First, I want to remind you before we start talking about Montgomery County business that if you really enjoy the show, I would encourage you and ask you as a favor to me to like us on Facebook. We have a weekly business hour page, the weekly business hour Facebook page. Go there and like us. And what you'll do, you'll be automatically supplied through your Facebook feed of all our shows. We post them there. Uh, so you don't have to go to the website, but you can click right there and it will take you to the shows. Now let's check in on business right here at Lone Star. Dick, what's on tap for Lone Star this coming week? Here at Lone Star, we're still moving into our transition from uh, our ad- our addition is the FM coming in April 104.5, 106.1. Uh, we're, we're, we're working to add a veteran show hopefully by next month and then we're going to keep moving to add more talk shows between the hours of 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every weekday, filling out talk radio for the Montgomery County Community Radio Station here at Lone Star Internet Radio. And then plus soon we'll be announcing the new season for the Conroe Vintage Radio Theater. We changed the name to uh, more of a downtown feel here in Conroe. So for radio plays on Sundays at 7, the Conroe uh, Radio Theater Vintage Radio will be uh, back in about a month or two with a whole new season lineup. Well, thank you, Dick. Personally, I'm really glad to hear that uh, the old-time radio is coming back, or the new name Conroe Vintage Radio. I love radio plays, and I encourage you. It's a great thing to do to listen on the radio to a play. And if you've got family, particularly younger members, children, who have never heard a radio play, uh, mark it down Sundays at 7. These are great productions. It's a total different medium to be entertained by, and it can be a lot of fun, particularly in a family environment. Well, I'm going to start off with something, a follow-up, if you will, to a topic I've been discussing for some time, and I mentioned it in last week's show, and uh, oddly enough, this morning, I happened to be doing some reading, business reading, prior to coming on the air, and there was a great article I want to share with you, and I've talked about technology uh, and how technology impacts our businesses today. And also, this past uh, show last week, I mentioned, uh, kind of gave out a, a, a subtle warning to all of us in business to always be aware of technology that might impact your industry, that might impact all the businesses like yours, whether it be local here in Montgomery County or throughout the United States and even throughout the world. And that's one thing we have to, to keep an eye on to a certain extent is things get developed all over the world now. And then all of a sudden, they come here to the United States and eventually work their way to Montgomery County. And uh, a technology that uh, they're out there, they can truly change an industry. And one day you wake up, not necessarily that sudden, but all of a sudden that technology has changed your business and you don't know it and you get left behind. And there's a technology, uh, according to this writer, that's going to forever be one of the most exciting technologies to ever come along, and I, I want to share this with you today is kind of an example. Now, again, I, I ask you to put on your broad mind, uh, open up uh, yourself to a little bit of thinking, because you're probably sitting there thinking, well, this will never impact my business, but this is the, uh, the technology uh, of uh, what they call AR, okay, and it's, it's interesting, AR is alternate reality is one thing it's called, but it's often misunderstood about what AR is. And according to Christopher Mims in today's Wall Street Journal in the keywords column, uh, he calls it the most exciting technology ever. And if you kind of look at his article or think about it a little bit, uh, you can see where AR, we've heard about VR, virtual reality, Uh, that's kind of been out there. I personally have thought it's more of a game type thing. It's more for entertainment. Uh, But there are business applications, and with AR, uh, I think there are a lot of potential business applications. And according to Mr. Mims, some of these are coming real quick. Uh, I don't know if you heard about a product called Google Glass. It kind of came and went a few years back. Uh, This was one of the examples, best-known examples, of trying to use AR. Uh, But And part of that misunderstanding, it didn't work. It was costly, had bugs. 
But this is where you uh, may have seen where you put on a pair of glasses, almost like a 3D movie, and you have a screen, if you will, in front of your eyes. In other words, you're not looking at a screen that's in front of you, but it's actually right in, uh, right, and when I say in front of you, it's not on a wall or at some distance. It's built within the glasses that you're using or the device that you put on. And in the past, these have been very bulky. They've been very expensive. But there's been a lot of innovation lately. Uh, and again, a lot of it is directed towards business. Uh, we hear about the consumer examples. We hear about somebody spending a couple thousand dollars to buy one of these devices and they put it on and they can watch a movie, they can do this or that. But apparently in the business world, particularly in technology industries, these type of devices, AR devices, are being used and tested and experimented with. And Mr. Mim says in the next five years or so, we can expect to see them trickle down into the small business world uh, and down to consumers as well. And the idea for an example, and this may sound awful far-fetched, it did to me when I read the first time, I had to read it a second time. You'll look down on your arm where you normally would look for your watch to tell time, and you'll be able to see the time even though you won't be able to, you're not wearing a watch because it'll actually be in the glasses that you have uh, that you're wearing the time. Uh, this is what this means. And if you stop for a minute, open that broad mind and think about in your business the opportunity that may exist for some kind of device that allowed information and data to be right with you as you walk through your day, and you can access it at will. And it could be as simple as uh, personal computer information in front of you. Uh, once they get these devices where they're, they're light, and I, one of the devices he talks about uh, produced by Epson only weighs two ounces, and actually they are building computing power. You know, the cell phone 5, 10, 15 years ago the cell phones we carry today, nobody could conceive they'd be so small and so powerful. Today, they're as powerful as a PC was 10 years ago. So don't get caught flat-footed. Keep an eye out. And if your business could benefit from this concept, expect it to come down the pike. Don't get caught short, being short-sighted and not thinking that it won't make a difference in your industry because it very well could. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our first break for the day. And I want to remind you at this point that an archive of this show will be posted. So if you miss any part of it, please feel free to go to the archives at IRLoneStar.com. We'll be right back with you. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategies and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at taylorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? 
Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks, along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936 936- 539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour, welcoming you back to the second segment of today's show. And before I get started, I want to remind you of something very important. We're going to talk about it a little more in detail later in the show that Lone Star Community Radio will soon also be available on FM 104.5 and 106.1 on your radio dial. That way we'll be offering you as a listener both a tune-in and an internet radio station. Well, let's talk about a little news, uh, some things that have been happening not only here but uh, around the country uh, that it could potentially impact us here in the business we do in Montgomery County. Uh, recently, uh, this past week, we had a lot of rain and we had some flooding. I don't know if all of you are familiar with it, but there was an article posted in the Courier on March 12th, uh, and it was updated again uh, later on Saturday night at 8.15, and written by Jay Jordan. Uh, East Montgomery County residents lose eight homes during flooding. You know, we've had uh, Trish Cooper on here of the Trish Cooper Insurance Agency talking about business insurance, and one of the things we touched on, oh, it's been about a year ago, was the idea that you need to check and see if your business is located in an area that might be prone to flooding. And that's something that a lot of people, particularly residential, but I think also in business. I have clients who have flood insurance uh, because of where their businesses are located and the potential. They're located near a waterway, a bio, a drainage area, uh, a creek. Uh, This is a real potential threat. And in this case, the rain we had last week uh, actually flooded out uh, eight homes. Uh, East Montgomery County firefighters rescued 15 people from these homes Saturday off FM 1485 at the East Fork of the San Jacinto River. Uh, Also, you may have noticed in the news that Lake Conroe uh, was closed. Uh, When I first heard that the lake was closed, I kind of did a double take, you know, how do you, why do you close the lake? Well, for good reason. They had lots of floating debris. They've been washed down shore in the flooding, plus the lake was up a couple feet, uh, presenting dangers to boat, boaters, uh, potential of hitting submerged docks and debris. It was reported in the article in the Courier, East Montgomery County Fire Chief Jeff Taylor said that the area uh, that was flooded is usually prone to flooding, uh, that it's currently uh, experiencing uh, last week. The San Jacinto River, the East Fork, crested at 23.6 feet, almost five feet above its modest flood stage level, according to the National Weather Services. So, and Taylor said he's not sure if the homes can be saved. And again, the same thing could be said for our businesses. Uh, Obviously, if you see the news reports, and most of us during our life have seen reports where people have been devastated, in particular in their homes or businesses, with flooding. Um... As Taylor said, I'm not really sure about the homes. The area is prone to flooding. Uh, The residents are very resilient. They all have somewhere to stay tonight, and that's the most important thing. So the point about this story to me in business as well as personal, if you live in a flood-prone area uh, or if your business is in one, at the very base, at the very minimum, have insurance. Be sure you do that. The second uh, news item I'd like to touch on today is one I picked up in a national publication, the Wall Street Journal, good article by Ruth Simon uh, in the journal this past weekend, uh, entitled Trouble in Texas. All of us know about the price of oil, the fact that it's down. There's been some impact here in Montgomery County. I noticed an article last week that Anadarko, which is headquartered here, uh, is showing that they're going to uh, announce they're going to lay a 1,000 people off from their operations throughout the world. Uh, but particularly hard hit has been West Texas. And let me give you a little bit of, uh, of a snapshot of that. But in particular, the reason I'm covering this story is because the impact on small businesses and what some small businesses have done to basically bounce back or hold their own during what has been a a really devastating, quick uh, slash in the economic uh, stability and growth of that area. Uh, Give you some numbers. Uh, This is in the middle and Odessa area. Retail sales in a year from the fourth quarter of 2014 to 2015 are down 19%. 
Auto purchases down 27%. Uh, building permits down 53%. Homes have dropped 5%. Now, that's the fourth quarter, and now we're already two, three months into the first quarter, and I suspect the results are going to be equal to or perhaps even worse when they look at that. But let's talk about some of the businesses and see if we can learn what to do or how people can cope in small business when you get a devastating situation like that. Uh, the first person mentioned the article was uh, Clint Fletcher. Uh, Mr. Fletcher owns stakes in nearly two do- dozen businesses in the Midland area, has had to shut down 85% of his oil and gas wells and mothball his oil field equipment rental business, retaining two employees to repair and t- test the idle equipment. His business of transporting water from oil field production, though, is holding up. Uh, that is better than a number of competitors who've shut their doors. Uh, as he pointed out, in 2015, people could still live and operate because you were living off 2014 receivables, but those have run out in 2016. Point here is Mr. Fletcher had his eggs in many baskets, obviously all of them affected by the drop in the price of oil, but what he has done is shut down or reduce the size of the businesses directly impact and looked at the ones that would potentially have the ability to maintain themselves and stay open for business. Another example was Mr. Morales, who owns three restaurants in in Midland, including one that opened last month. He obviously is feeling the effects, but what has he done? He says, well, customers are less free spending than they were when oil prices were high. So what he did is reintroduced a daily special, uh, such as a $6.99 taco plate that normally he was selling for $10. He pointed out, he says, I've been inundated with people looking for work. I receive over 30 applications a month compared with a total of 25 in 2014. He's dropped back his starting pay to $11 an hour from 15 two years ago, staying open longer, and after cutting back during the oil boom to hold down overtime cost. He says, I've been through this before, and we always come out of it. Now, here's a business owner that's been expanding, but he's taken the necessary steps. Sounds like he was prepared. Pointed out in the article uh, some other things, and this one was kind of interesting. Wesley Webb had a large catering business, uh, and after the price of oil dropped in the second half of 2014, he went from serving three meals a day to crews on as many as 50 rigs and fracking site to only two or three jobs a week last year. Uh, As he said, it was like somebody turned out the lights. He had to figure out a way to keep his business afloat. He said more than a year ago, he took a stockpile of eggs, bacon, and sausage that he had uh, for serving breakfast meals in the field and launched a special on breakfast burritos. He now serves serves as many as 2,000 breakfast burritos uh, in a retail front, also turning his commercial kitchen into a barbecue restaurant. He says that we've seen it go from really good to really bad to now we're getting back to good. Point I'd like to make again is we all get hit from time to time and if we have a long-term business. And it sounds like the people, at least the ones interviewed and mentioned in the article in the Wall Street, have been resilient, but they've had to adjust. They've had to look for other ways to utilize their assets and make them work for them. I'd like to share with you also a little business tip I picked up recently. And uh, this was written by Norm Brodsky, who's a a favorite of mine uh, in the Inc. magazine. Norm is a longtime business owner, He's had a great deal of success, and about three or four years ago, in his column in Inc. Magazine, he talked about opening some hotels, first one, then another, out in uh, in the Dakotas, uh, and this was because the oil and gas fracking business and what they call the Bakken field was really skyrocketing. In fact, one hotel, they sold out their occupancy, their rooms, for over a year, contracted with a major oil company to pay a very good rate per night for all their workers. Basically, they bought the hotel, uh, so to speak. And obviously, with the changes in the oil industry that we just mentioned in West Texas, the same thing uh, has happened. Very devastating to the Bakken region of North Dakota. Uh, He says, I'm very fortunate. And And he points out, he said, I had a mortgage on the motels before the price drop. He said, right now, there's no way I could borrow money. I knew things would have to come down at some point, but he says, I got my equity out and I have the debt. He says, we've scaled back uh, and now we offer special deals to big companies targeting workers in the field. Again, doing some of the things that the people in West Texas did. 
He said, we have done things and we're breaking even, eking out a little profit, but a whole different business picture and he is adjusting to weather the storm. Because one thing is is just basically true. The oil is going to be there. The business is going to be there. It's going to come back at some point. So he positioned himself through good business acumen to be prepared for any storm because commodities, oil, and gas have a history of going up and down, up and down. Your business may not be subject to that, but again, it is smart business to prepare yourself for the situations that may occur. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another break now. And when we come back, we're going to have a very special feature. We're going to have a conversation here in the studio, and Dick and I are going to talk about how a major change in a business can be addressed and how our businesses really are like chapters in a book. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategies and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Taylor Eyes PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Eyes PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Eyes PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at tailorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. Thank you for listening today. Uh, We've covered a lot of ground this morning, uh, talking about different subjects, particularly being prepared for the worst if and when it ever comes, whether it's a natural disaster or an economic challenge. And at this point, I want to turn the page, if you will, and talk about a positive situation. You know, one of the great things about being in business for ourselves is we get a chance to plan and decide where we take our business. Now, I know sometimes that's subject to things such as economic developments and or natural disasters that I mentioned earlier, but we basically get to plan, and then we go off, and a lot of times it is our business ability, our business, our ability to plan and execute our plan that truly decides where the business goes. And one of the things that I find really exciting for business is when it reaches uh, what I call milestones of success. In other words, you sit down when you plan your business, and I always encourage my clients that you put some milestones in front of you. Uh, They could be monthly, quarterly, annually, uh, particularly if you do a three- or five-year plan. Where are you taking the business so that you stay focused on your goals that are in front of you and where you want to go? And one of the things a business plans, if in fact you're in business to grow and you want to increase the size of your business, revenues, profits, et cetera, is that you plan that growth and, and, and you set aside what I call, and this is my approach to it, books, chapter, excuse me, chapters in a book. We turn a new chapter, a new phase in our business. And this has happened right here at Lone Star Internet Radio, now known as Lone Star Community Radio. Uh, so the next chapter, I guess, would be entitled Lone Star Community Radio 1. And uh, I've asked Dick, uh, who is the general manager and owner of the station, 
to talk with me a little bit on air. He happens to be the engineer as well, and talk about the new chapter and some of the things he's done uh, to bring the station to this point is an encouragement to anyone who's listening uh, that when you plan out and you purpose yourself, even though you got to have a lot of patience too, got to mention that, you can reach these milestones of growth uh, and reach these milestones of success and then turn that page and what that's kind of looking like and give you a sense of someone who's right in the middle of doing this. So, Dick, welcome to the show. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to take a few minutes uh, in this segment to talk to us about because I think it's, again, very exciting when a business reaches that point uh, and hits a new milestone of success uh, that, uh, in your case, even a name change. Uh, Talk to us about the name change. What precipitated that? Uh, Really what it started with uh, Lone Star Internet Radio when we uh, figured out partnering with the city of Conroe, going FM, it's just an additional way people can listen to us. So what I wanted to do is keep uh, Lone Star in the name but an ad community instead of Internet Radio just because we're not just on Internet Radio anymore. So really we're trying to encompass everything that we offer. Right, and the one thing I like from my uh, point of view as an advisor or mentor of the name community, the station has always been a community radio station. You em- you em- you really embrace the entire community, so now your name really tells the public what you do, your community. What is community all about when it comes to Lone Star? Uh, really the goal is to be a beacon and also a place where the community can get together and share ideas and also talk about what's happening in the community uh, something that I kind of I like as when it comes to the radio world is talk radio. And talk radio to me is uh, that there's not a, an equal balance to music and talk. There's too much talk, if that makes sense, for especially radio shows that are four hours long. I don't know if anyone who are big fans of the, the big radio personalities, but I feel like as a producer and also a content creator – that four hours is a long time to really fill and to be consistent while being efficient. Uh, with the community aspect, we allow talk radio from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., which is kind of the sit-down time for a lot of people at work. Uh, and we uh, we have shows that are about an hour long to really focus on, condense it down to what we're trying to achieve in that hour. So it really forces those talk shows to really to, fi- to figure out what they want to say instead of having, oh, I have four hours, we'll eventually get to the hot points. Eventually, this kind of condenses everything down to the new way people are consuming media, which is going to be fast and responsive and not too long because I don't know anyone who likes to listen to four hours of radio nonstop. So uh, that's one thing I love offering to the community because we get, we get to offer a diversity of stuff, especially how big Montgomery County is where we can touch – we have room to touch on everything instead of saying, oh, for this four-hour block, we're going to sit here and talk about Conroe. So instead of doing that, we're going to have one-hour block, and they might talk about Conroe and things like that. So, Right, and I, and I think that's uh, you know part of what I enjoy about what's happening here in this particular reaching this milestone is it's a major uh, situation or change in your business, uh, lots of new opportunities opening, and I think sometimes businesses – really don't look hard enough at what opportunities are out there for them. And I think in your case, if I can make a comment, uh, this opportunity with the city developed. Uh, It's been a very patient building of a relationship uh, working with the city, and it gives your business access to a whole new area of communication, meaning broadband or, or I guess, FM band, excuse me, you know, information and access to communicate your message and deliver your content in a whole new way. What are you hoping to do with the FM uh, access to the FM channel? I think really what the main goal is, as uh, when you look at a company, you're you're kind of seeing it from a different perspective. Uh, Right now, we can't really tell who the FM listener will be, but it also changes the way we want to be perceived. Uh, one of the things we're going to be adding is weather and traffic at the top of the bottom of hour, mainly because those who listen to Internet radio, the mentality is you're clicking on a button to tune in at a certain time because you're available to tune in. With the FM, people have more of a loose reaction to stuff where they, they're in their cars at different times of the day. So you know you might be on your computer at work, but when you're going to go have lunch, you're going to get in your car for 5, 10 minutes, and you might tune in just for 5 or 10 minutes. Uh, and a lot of our listenership – will be i think a lot of people who will be in the car just because they're driving around that's a whole new area of people 
So when we're looking at the business, we got to think about how to frame how we sound, how we're telling people that they're listening to Lone Star Community Radio, and especially trying to get them to sign on online because we want them when, when they're out of their car. A lot of people don't carry an FM tuner with them into the workplace, but they have a computer or they have a smartphone. And we just let them know, hey, you can keep listening when you're outside of the FM band. And when you go to Houston, when you go to Huntsville, when you go to Beaumont, wherever you're going from Conroe and also Willis on the other areas, so that you can still listen to us. You know, one of the other things that I think is a direct benefit of this, of, of being able to partner, say, with an entity, in this case, a city, the city of Conroe, is that their content that they have uh, that would be appropriate that they want to communicate, uh, then you've got a strong relationship. I know you have programs with the city of Willis and doing some programming with other chambers and whatnot, uh, but I'm kind of excited to learn more about what's going on in Conroe. Well, I mean, uh, what's funny about that, you mentioned the the gain the city's involved. When the partnership was approached from the city, it made a lot of sense for us because what we're doing right now here at the community radio station is just trying to do our best to provide stuff for the city or for the city of Conroe and also other people inside inside the county. Uh, one thing that I've always want to be doing is somehow getting a relationship, and every relationship is different in the business world, especially with your clients and also with your partners, is trying to get everybody on board of what you're trying to do, which Lone Star is slowly getting the county to recognize different organizations, nonprofits, businesses, and especially uh, cities, just saying, hey, you know, we can do something, even if it's a five-minute update, you know, for the week, just send them our stuff. Or we can actually have our own show. I think that's what's really nice about our approach to the radio world is a lot of radio stations, I, I would say what we're doing is extremely unique because of everything that we're offering, not just adding or doing ourselves, but we're offering to the community. You know, and I'll make an observation, and I think this is a great business point for any business out there, unless you're doing some kind of uh, business that requires a, a level of privacy, protect data or whatever. But the idea that this station, and I know it's a radio station, but if you if you step back just for a minute and think about your business, one of the things Dick's done in his business, he's opened the door literally to anybody that wants to be involved, anyone who wants to come on uh, the morning show uh, from 6 to 10. Uh, people can come on and, and talk about their subject, uh, again, within reasonable boundaries. Uh, we talked about earlier free speech. But the point is that he has invited the entire community, uh, the government's, uh, the businesses, the individuals, the nonprofits, uh, to have a pl- be part of this platform and be able to communicate their message. And I encourage everybody uh, in your own businesses, look at that and see how you can be part of more, uh, your, make your business more a part of the community as a way to market your business in particular. Be a little bit o- more open-minded about things because, again, I think there are opportunities right there in front of all of us every day and sometimes, as I alluded to or earlier in a segment, about opening your broad mind uh, and think a little bit about your business when you have a chance. Uh, think about wh- how you can connect to the community, your potential prospect of customers, and your customers. It's there for the taking uh, if you'll just follow through and execute it. Well, Dick, I appreciate you joining us today and sharing uh, a little bit about the newest chapter, uh, Lone Star Community uh Radio Chapter 1, as I call it, and hopefully you'll keep us informed of what's going on in the business here in Lone Star. So thank you again. Thank you. I want to finish up this segment. Uh, I have a little bit of uh, hopefully a business tip uh, that you can use, and we talked, uh, I just mentioned uh, in the segment with Dick about uh, connecting with our prospects. Uh, Share with you three quick ideas uh, that can make, uh, if you're not already doing so, connect uh, value the value proposition of your business with your prospects. Uh, the first thing is to be objective. Uh, as the objective in your va- va- value proposition is where you move from finding purpose to finding focus. So what you have to do is think about what your prospect's main goal is. In other words, put yourself in the shoes of anyone that comes into your store or anyone that you're going out calling on or anyone that's being referred to you try to always take a second and think about, okay, what are they really looking for? What do they really want from me? And I think if you look at the list, and I had a chance to deal with one today, a business I'm dealing with on a personal basis in my home, I had something repaired, and I really appreciate the way they're doing business. Uh, We missed something when they came out to repair. It wasn't their fault. 
Uh, we didn't, my wife and I, neither one of us saw there was another area need of repair. So we uh, missed that opportunity. They made the call. The work they did was great. So I had to call them this morning and say, gosh, we need you to come out again. And you've done a wonderful job. And the way they reacted to it, uh, it wasn't like, okay, we just, well, we'll hit you up for another charge to come out and uh, uh, trip charge or whatever. It was like, oh my gosh, let us come out and take a look, make sure we know what to do. And we're going to take care of you. And that's what you've got to do. They they put themselves in my shoes because, you know, potentially this could cost me for another trip and whatnot. And the way they posed it to me, hey, we'll come back and just take care of this, maybe an additional charge because of the extent of the work. And this is what you got to do. you got to always put yourself in your client, customer, prospective customer shoes. The second thing is motivation. Uh, what is the motivation that drives the prospect's actions? Why are they contacting you? Why have they come into your store? Think about that sometimes. Why are they doing business with you? Because you smile, because they like you, uh, they've known you, they go to church with you, uh, you're on the same bowling team. I mean, that all sounds neat, but I think it's that's too easy of an answer. Try to understand what motivates people to do business with you. And the last thing is experience. What are the past experience of the prospect? To me, this is the most difficult one. This is called listening when someone comes in and does business with you. And if they take the time to communicate with you, if you open some uh, questions, have an open-ended question, trying to create a little bit of a relationship. Sometimes people want to talk. Sometimes they're in a hurry. If they're dealing with you online, you have to do that in a text way. Uh, But the idea is you're trying to learn a little bit more about that customer, what is driving them based on their past experiences, that they have a bad experience. Is that why they're working with you? In my case, I look to do business with people that know what they're doing, they're responsive, and they want my business. This past weekend, I was trying to do business and been talking to someone for a while uh, to spend a considerable amount of money, or what's considerable to me, and they kind of ignored me uh, at the next step in our relationship, and I walked away and I said, gosh, I need to find somewhere else before I actually spend that money. So try to understand Now I'm in the marketplace looking for someone else who will pick up on the fact that, gosh, I've done the research, I'm rounding second base, so to speak, on the baseball field, and I need someone to pick up on my experience and then carry me all the way home, someone who knows I've had a bad experience. So it's important to understand your value proposition and what it means to your prospective customer. Put yourself, again, in their shoes. Try to do that a little bit more, and I think you'll be amazed at the results that you have in the work that you do. Well, we're going to take our third and final break for the day. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little bit with our Silver Fox Thought of the Week. Uh, This week, we're going to talk about taking advice on your business. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Taylor Ice PR works exclusively to get your business noticed. Public relations is how others perceive you and your company. By tailorizing the marketing strategy exclusively to your business, your story is told. Taylor Ice PR services include networking, social media, blogs, press releases, public appearances, and event planning. To learn about Taylor Ice PR, call Margie Taylor at 936-828-6881 or visit the website at tailorizedpr.com. My business is tailored to yours. Running a business is hard. Pressure to maximize profits and minimize loss continue to grow. Schooley Mitchell of Houston can help. Their independent consultants will ensure you are receiving the best communications and credit card processing services at the best prices. Most importantly, their services are completely risk-free. If they don't find savings for you, there is no fee. Contact Schooley Mitchell of Houston today to find out. Call 832-314-1815 or visit their website at schooleymitchell.com forward slash jmpolio. Are you paying too much for your personal or business insurance? Patricia Cooper Insurance on FM 1488 and Tamina Road is an independent agency that can shop multiple carriers to find the best rates and coverages to fit your specific needs. Call us today at 281-356-9955 and let us go to work for you. Patricia Cooper Insurance, where our customers are treated like family. Are you planning on growing, expanding, or possibly selling your business? All of these business opportunities require developing strategies and setting goals in order to achieve success. Providing specialized consulting 
in these and other key business decisions is what Silver Fox Advisors have been doing since 1986. Let us help you today. Call us at 713-343-3718. It might be the most profitable call that you ever make. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox Advisor and host. I want to thank you for listening to the program today. Uh, we're in our fourth and final segment, and this is where we get a chance to talk about the Silver Fox Advisor Tip of the Week. And the tip I'd like to offer you this week is taking advice on your business. Now, okay, what am I talking about? We work in our business, on our business. We've all heard that over and over. What I'm talking about is making a real effort at some point in the life of your business, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, when, about taking advice on a consistent basis, or should I say getting advice on a consistent basis. You know, in the life of every business, we start small, typically, whatever that means to you. Could many cases, it's just you who start the business. Occasionally, you have a wife or, or you hire a part-time uh, employee or you have a partner or two. Uh, some businesses, uh, they go out and raise money ahead of time, of course, have a number of workers. But in the beginning, you're small whatever that might have meant to you. And at some point, your business reaches a place where you need to get some advice on how the business is running. You need some body, uh, such as a Silver Fox advisor, in my opinion, or you need a group of people, such as an advisory board, to help you, people who will tell you the what I call the unvarnished truth, that will spend the time to learn your business, understand it, and be able to talk with you, answer your questions, uh, particularly about issues about moving the business forward, uh, day-to-day questions perhaps, employee-related, financial, whatever it may be. And I think this is critical in the life of any business. And what I particularly wanted to talk about on the subject was creating an effective advisory board. I believe once your business gets to the point where you've got $100,000, $200,000 in revenue, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, because every business is different. I think it's time to try to create an advisory board. Now, what's an advisory board look like to you? Um, That's a broad topic uh, in some ways, but I would say three to five people is a good number to shoot for. Uh, These people should be people not necessarily that are associated with your business, and I mean professionals. You have CPAs, an attorney, I hope, when you start your business, because I always encourage people to do that. Uh, You can ask them if they'll sit on an advisory board with you. You have to decide how often you want this board to meet. Uh, I recommend at least quarterly. I recommend providing them financials of your business, accurate financials in advance of the meeting, so that they can look through uh, the financials and be prepared, and also to send them other topics that you want to talk about. Uh, Remember, you're asking these people to help you. Uh, The next question, which is a big one for any business, do I compensate these people or do they do it uh, as a way of a free situation? There's a lot of mentoring that takes place. I think that's a major decision. My encouragement is, based on experience of being on these boards and also having these boards advise my business, is that you pay people something, Uh, whether it's $100 a meeting or $200. uh, I know many small businesses, that's a lot of money when you multiply it times three or four or five people. But if done correctly, it is worth many times that amount. Let me give you a few tips, though, about how to create an effective uh, board. I think it's important to have a purpose. You need to be sure that you have a purpose for your board yourself. In other words, you need to reflect and decide what you want the, the board to, to do for you. Then look for people that can f- help you fill that purpose. Uh, You need to carefully consider any knowledge gaps you have. You may know a particular industry well, well, but, you know, you're working in other areas. You need a broader-based business experience. Make a list of what you need to help you directly. Uh, You need to also look for people that may have doubts. In other words, people who can say no, people that will ask questions. It's nothing wrong with that. You need to be able to take that. But they also have to have your best interest at heart. Uh, when they're giving this advice. But again, don't look for all yes people. I think that's very important. Uh, You need to look at the network of people you have. 
but also plug into the network of the first advisor, say, that agrees to come on and help you. Uh, they know people. And that is a great resource because sometimes you'll – I found myself one time sitting down and saying, well, who do I have that I know? Who do I know that I can bring onto this board to serve me in this way? And I only had one or two people. That's all I needed because they knew people. Once I sat down, my case had lunch with them, talked about it, uh, had a written presentation. I handed them, went through it with them so it was clear what I was looking for. Uh, so they have their own networks. Be sure you write down. Uh, what you do and and so on and so forth. And I encourage people that when you do a board, have each advisor uh, complete a non-disclosure and conflict of interest agreement. These are very simple documents. They can be, I should say. Uh, Make sure that they agree in writing that uh, what their role is going to be, the responsibilities, expectations, but also that they enter into a a clear, concise non-disclosure and conflict of interest agreement. And these are readily available, and your attorney can provide them to you easily. Remember that they're not contributing their valuable time for money because, again, the compensation, typically unlike a board of directors of a large corporation, is not going to going to uh, pay them for their time. So you need to be very efficient as you put together your agenda, you put together your needs, and communicate, as I mentioned earlier, in advance. Be sure you keep it intimate. Uh, this is the idea of limiting your board to three to five. I think you can start with three, but I have done very well with four or five people because they had a broader range of experience, and you'll be amazed once you do it right, the kind of information that you will get. Some of it you would have never thought of, the perspectives, the angles, if you will, that they look at your business and answer your questions. It is amazing. It's like going to school for your business. The other thing is maximize the value of, that you get from them. All these advisors can, should be able to provide valuable feedback and recommendations. But again, be sure you prepare and give them the information that they need ahead of time. It's your responsibility to conduct an accurate, official, efficient, well-run meeting because you're going to run the meeting. You're the chairman of the board, so to speak. And be sure you communicate with these people during interim times, not only with information about that they can use in the board meetings, but keep them abreast of what's going on. If you have a newsletter, any kind of advertising that you send out or hand out, be sure that they are brought into that circle and they're on your list, your email list or whatnot, so they can stay abreast of what's going on, particularly if you opt for quarterly meetings, because they'll lose track quarter to quarter, so they need to be aware of your meeting. Uh, even potentially offer them a discount. Maybe that's part of the compensation, depending on the products or services you offer, uh, so that they can use your products and services, hopefully, and that way they can offer you, again, an unvarnished point of view or an opinion about how your services work. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you joining us this week, and I want to encourage you uh, that during the week, make a visit to the IRLoneStar.com website, Uh, part of your week because you can stay up on everything that's happening in Montgomery County, not just through our shows, uh, but also our calendar of events. And also you have great country Western music to listen to. Uh, I hope you will join us in the morning show, afternoon, evening shows, a lot of special shows. So stay up with us. And as we close today's show, I want to give a big Lone Star thanks to our sponsors, Patricia Cooper Insurance Company and Trish Cooper and her crew, Scootley Mitchell, my good friend, Jerry uh, polio and the great people at Schooley Mitchell. This is a service that you really need to look at. Taylor PR, Margie Taylor, and of course to the Silver Fox Advisors uh, and the great opportunity they offer you for mentoring and advising. Stay engaged this week. Keep your focus on what really counts in your business. Next week, our special studio guest will be President Riley of Lone Star College, Montgomery. So until then, I want to thank you for joining us. And until next week, remember, to stay in touch with what is happening in Montgomery County right here on Lone Star Community Radio. 